The storm had now practically ceased and we went outdoors. My thoughts were to get home as soon as I could and see what was happening there, but I was too frightened to go alone. When we started to walk up towards State Street, we saw the sky was all lighted up, and it looked as though all New London was burning. We didn't know where the fire was, but the heat from it was terrific. While trees and poles were blowing down by the thousands, and walls and buildings were crumbling to block every artery to travel, fire came to threaten the entire business section of the city and to add to the horror and terror of the storm-stricken populace. And that evening, uh, before sunset, after the wind had died down and so forth, my father and mother and I walked up to a, a small hill on Eastern Point Road to look across the river. And we saw a fire across the river in New London. And we heard later that it was um, a coal yard. A fire that started on Bank Street in downtown New London spread quickly to a nearby coal yard, fire station, and auto garage. The blaze destroyed 26 buildings and threatened to burn the entire city. It was the worst fire in New London since Benedict Arnold torched the city in 1781. I'll never forget the glow in the sky. It was, it was just unbelievable. It, it, it looked like the whole of downtown was on fire. We thought it was the end of the world, actually. You know, when you're a youngster, those are the first thoughts that come into your mind. And I remember being put to bed there and looking out and seeing the glow in the sky. And it looked like the sun was setting there. There was this huge glow in the sky. The next morning, when we got up and people began to look for all of the damage, um, a, a young chap named Red Mercer blew into town and he said, oh, this storm is all over and it's a hurricane and New London has burned to the ground. And I was terrified because my father was then working, he was the maintenance man at the day, and I thought, that's right in the heart of the city. If you lived through it, you never forgot it. It was unbelievable, the, the, the wind and the the, the, the destructiveness. We are uh, walking down the street and tree after tree was just lying there and, and big huge elm trees just the wind just took them all down. It was, it was unbelievable. Every store on State Street had broken windows and torn roofs. When we reached the top of the hill near the library, I was shocked to see the whole road covered with tree trunks. And it looked like pickup sticks, and they were all giant elms. The trees were all over Montauk Avenue. It was a mess. The houses on our side of the street had wonderful trees, and they all went down. And afterwards, the kids um, used the, the trees as slides. Afterwards, I remember there was a lot of water and these big gas cans that were all over the place. And the boys in our neighborhood would get on them. And if they had to go to George Hasen's grocery store, they would just rock back and forth with a little boat to go to the grocery store. I remember seeing a rowboat. It must have been after the storm broke later in the afternoon, I was mentioned. I remember a rowboat going up and down. <laughs> Elm Street. We could not get into the front of the house because the fishing boats were on the front porch. Boats large and small, wharves and buildings along the Thames River waterfront, the cottages at Ocean Beach and at all other beaches along the Connecticut and Rhode Island shore were picked up and hurled about by the waves and wind like so many jack straws. And when the hurricane was over, they were found all jumbled together in pitiful masses of wreckage. We drove over to Ocean Beach to see what was happening over there. And we saw houses upside down over there. Houses in the creek, the houses on the boardwalk, most of them were standing on end. The water had gone through the bottom. And when it went through the bottom, it destroyed the supports. So the buildings were sort of standing on their noses, like the front of the building was down on the ground. And, and it, it was just unbelievable. The hurricane which would today be labeled a Category 3 storm, killed more than 600 people. Napa Tree Point in Rhode Island was wiped clean of all of its 44 cottages. The National Hurricane Center ranks the hurricane of 38 as the 15th deadliest hurricane in history. It is also the 15th costliest at about 6.6 .6 billion in damage in today's dollars. <laughs>